Hi guys, I'm Arisa. Welcome to season two of The Bridge, Africa's number one financial literacy show brought to you by Business Day. This season, we're shaking things up. We're going to be interviewing millennial business leaders and celebrities and talking to them about the financial decisions and business models behind their successful brands. Our guest today is Bolale Olukoni. She's a TV presenter and producer who's best known for her work on Project Fame, Moments with Mo, on the carpet with Bolinto, and recently her documentary, God's Wives for Widows. Stay tuned, guys. London, New York, or Lagos. Business or holiday, home or office. You can now carry out your tax transactions from anywhere in the world. You can now file all your tax returns, pay online, get a receipt, and even process your tax clearance certificate from anywhere in the world online and in real time. All you need to do is log on to www.firs.gov.ng and click on e-services and be introduced to the world of innovation, convenience, and transparency from the FIRS. You can also pay stamp duty as you register a new company with the CAC or for other transactions that require stamp duty payment online. You can also file your withholding tax returns and determine the withholding tax deducted from you is in government covers so that you can get your receipt within 45 days as long as the deduction has been remitted. Yes, all of this and more online at www.firs.gov.ng slash e-services. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Please note that all FIRS services are free of charge. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. It pays to pay your tax. Hi, Bolali. Hey, Arisa. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. <laughs> Welcome to The Bridge. Hey. So basically, what I want from this interview is for a young girl who is looking at Bonale and saying, oh, one day I want to be on TV. One yeah. day I want to be a TV presenter and understand not just your story, but the business model and financial decisions that you've made mm -hmm. to make your brand successful. Yeah. So let's start with why did you decide that you wanted to become a TV presenter yeah. in Nigeria? For yeah. That so it's really interesting. I studied international studies and communications in university. And, um, you know, when I first moved back, I was working at an NGO and I did my NYC in Ikiti. I was there for the whole year. I had a great time, but I realized that I needed a bit of a change. And because I have two degrees, I'm passionate about media and also about development work. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what, let me give this a shot and let yeah. me use my communications degree. And Moments with Mo had just recently moved to Ebony Live TV. They were doing an audition called Mo Search, mm. and it was pretty much looking for young new presenters to join um, Mo Abudu on her, on her show. And I was like, okay, I mean, I've watched <laughs> I the show. I Exactly, I've watched the show. I'm very passionate about, you know, sharing my opinions and human interest stories. Mm. And I was like, this would be a great opportunity um, to be myself, but also to have a good time and also to connect with people and tell people about other people their stories. So I auditioned, went through Mo Search. It was like a reality show. It was such an intense process. Process. I cried on TV. <laughs> <laughs> it was so intense. It was like America's Next Top Model for, for presenting. presenting. Yeah. Um, and I was fortunate to be chosen as one of the two presenters to join her show. So it was myself and Delacqua Oni. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you saw an opportunity. You went for it mm -hmm. because you were passionate about sharing yeah. your opinions yeah. and, you know, human interest stories mm -hmm. on TV. But did you think about the money side of it? Like, so... Was that part of what gingered you to like want to go on Women's With More because mm -hmm. you knew that it would come with a big paycheck or was that not a factor? So it was interesting because, you know, I think when I got into presenting, presenting was a really new thing. Mm. Uh, there were a few people who had, you know, done some work, uh, you know, African Magic had 53 Extra, mm. but there wasn't really that many other shows that were very prominent then. Mm. So I think it was kind of like, a, I didn't even know. Um, I wasn't sure, but I knew that the entertainment industry was beginning to boom. So I knew mm. there was a lot of potential. And I'm just not a nine to five person. <laughs> and I thought to myself, I also have the ability to, I like to make things work for myself. I like to create opportunities where they are not. So mm. I knew that there was a potential that if, for, you know, I had seen a few 
people who were doing really well for themselves as presenters. Um, mm. You know, Dolapo was coming from 53 mm. Extra. Um, Adora, she was on Project Fame too. Yeah. So there were some examples where I'd seen like, oh, these people are doing well for themselves. Okay, so, so I asked this mm. because, you know, it's so glamorous. Like lots of young girls, yeah. they see you on TV, they're glamorous. like, oh my God, I want, to, I want to be like on TV. Yeah. I want to be on a red carpet as well. I want to do what Bolali does. But historically, especially in this part of the world, media personalities don't really make a lot of money yeah. as TV presenters. Definitely. But you've been able to monetize a lot of your skill sets to um, make some bank. Yeah, definitely. So talk to us about how, you know, you become a media personality. Yeah. How do you now create other, you know, streams of income for yourself? So that's the thing, right? It's just like, and I'm, I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use football, but I'm also, footballers make a lot of money, period. Mm. But their levels to, to the money it. they make. Yeah. Let's talk about someone like Ronaldo versus I don't even know, just a regular midfielder mm. that we don't even know. The point is, Ronaldo is probably making 10 times more than this his teammate yeah. because Ronaldo has been able to build a brand around, around himself. himself. And it's the same thing. So I have a platform as a media personality and I've been able to build this identity <laughs> that is beyond just me being on TV mm. where people are like, if they go and meet Bolale, X, Y, and Z is going to happen. If they go mm. and associate with Bolale or affiliate their product with Bolale, this is how it's going to look for them. Um, so that's pretty much what it is, is that I've been able to say, yes, I'm a presenter. That's my platform. That's my backdrop. But mm. I'm using it to become a cash cow. So like man. flesh that out a bit. So basically what you said now is, I've created a brand around myself that other brands see as an opportunity to sell like, yeah. their goods and services. So you work, you do brand collaborations. Mm -hmm. What else? I know you started producing as yeah. well. Yeah. So funny enough is that the money is really in the producing. Uh, just, yeah. to, just a note <laughs> to you guys, the producers want to decide the budget. The yeah. producer decides how much they pay the presenter. Mm -hmm. Unless you're the executive producer, which means that you collect an Irish money. Yeah. Like I was saying, <laughs> um, you know, so there's producing and when you are a producer, you don't even have to be in the show, which mm. sometimes there's some content that I produce for different brands, you know, around an event. And I'm that you don't see not about anywhere. Bar. It has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with on the carpet with Balinto. It has nothing to do with moments. It has nothing to do with me. I'm just creating content for them, okay. um, which is another way to make money specifically in our industry, because we all know that content is a new oil. So yes. yeah. Content is definitely the new money. So, the next thing I want to ask you is, <laughs> again, with this whole glamour that comes yeah. with building your brand, there's some entertainers that will say, you know, looking good is a part of my business. It I have is. to look a certain way, so I have to spend a certain amount of money Definitely. to look good. Yeah. Um, because it's, in, it's an important factor in mm -hmm. building this brand. But there are lots of, I know that we don't always pay cash Not for you know, the way that we look yeah. from hair to yeah. um, hair clothes to stuff. clothes to makeup. But young girls who follow you on Instagram mm. and they want to be a slay queen and they want <laughs> to be a style icon as yeah. well. And they see you wearing something and they want to buy it and they break their budgets like trying to do that. So explain, I want you to talk a little bit about the social media aspect. you know, aspects, so, like how. So it was interesting. I, I started moments for a year and a half. I pretty much did not care about Instagram and social media. Mm. Fortunately, I caught on quick and you know, it was people around me um, that were like, Balani Hapa. <laughs> I remember Taka kept saying to me, she's like, Balani, it's a guy, bye. <laughs> and she was saying that to me all the time. And I was like, okay, let me actually, you know, follow suit and yeah. put some effort into this. And I was hosting Project Fame and I said, I'm going to use Project Fame to push this whole fashion icon thing because mm. what I realized is, yes, I'm creating content. But people also on social media want to see what looks good. Yeah. And it was down to the point where I said, my sister and I, uh, you have to also having strategy. Mm -hmm. We had a very specific strategy, strategy down to the kind of nail polish I was allowed to use. Um, the uh, kind of hair, the kind of eyeshadow I was yeah. allowed to use. I had a specific look for that whole season of Project mm -hmm. Fame. And I wanted to make sure that I looked young, fresh, youthful, and fashionable. Yeah. And we were able to achieve it. Um, you know, I think in a span of two to three months, my social media probably increased by 50,000, mm. um, which was really good. And from then, I became like a fashion it girl. Yeah. And once you kind of get to that point, then people begin to want to work with you. Brands mm -hmm. want to say, I want to give you these clothes. Can you wear it? Because if you wear it, this is what's going to So happen. this is a key thing that I feel like a lot of people don't understand about social media. Social media has created a new like social currency. It's basically become 
advertising, right? Yeah. It's the new advertising platform. So you build an audience and then other brands want to work with you so that they can have access to that audience. Mm -hmm. So the question is, you, you create a brand on social media that helps you to leverage on your audience and those that audience becomes become like the customers for other brands that you work yeah, with. Yeah. So, but I feel like a lot of people don't understand it. They think it's about the popularity. Yeah, so I think that's mm. the thing. I always say everyone, which is which is weird because I don't know if I would be very uh, into social media if I didn't mm. do what I do, mm. maybe in a different way. But I always say people who, and everyone uses it differently. Some people <laughs> just want to look good, but I'm yeah. like, there's so much potential. Even if you are not in the entertainment industry, mm -hmm. you don't have to be in the entertainment industry to be making income from social media. Mm -hmm. If you put that much effort into looking good and people saying you look good, you're making you some making money. Making some money. Mm -hmm. Like, otherwise, what are we doing? So fashion designers want to work with you yeah. because they, they give you clothes and they know that when you wear it, your 100,000 plus followers are going to, at least a part of them are going to want yes. to buy right. the exactly. clothes. So you're almost like a marketing tool yeah. for them. So last year, yeah. we both got the opportunity to go to South Africa several times. Mm -hmm. And to a lot of people on social media, it looked like fun. Yeah. Like we were just going on holiday all willy mm -hmm. Um And it was actually work. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about how you have a lifestyle goal like travel. It's something yeah. that you're passionate about. Yeah. And you've created a brand where you don't necessarily have to pay cash for that um, travel, for that experience, you, yeah. you leverage on your brand to create to that yeah. kind of experience. So Definitely. do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it was crazy. Um, you know, I had had a goal where I wanted to make sure that I used my platform and I had used the brand identity to be able to collaborate with some travel mm -hmm. companies and South African tourism came on board. One. And it was something where, and I also actually went to Mauritius as well. So I did two. Um, that was amazing. <laughs> I did it with uh, Travel Better. And it was the kind of situation where I knew that I could live this experience, but mm -hmm. I don't have to actually pay, pay for, it. for it. And the important thing is that I had begun to position myself and convince them, and they had also seen the value in partnering with me to say, Bolanle has an aspirational brand. Yeah. So if we you know, do this project with her, other people are also want to go to South Africa or is Mauritius mm -hmm. or wherever. And that's what happened last year. Because again, it's about you converting your, your audience exactly. into customers for the brands that you work yeah. with. Okay, so. Let's talk about money, more money stuff now. <laughs> What's your biggest money mistake? Definitely, um, I had one job that I was, and this is, I think it's, I was negotiating and I didn't negotiate with a manager. Okay. And this was when I was very, very new and I was very fresh. Um, and I think I probably left like seven million on the table. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> For just not yeah. negotiating. Yeah. It was crazy. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, and yes, I was new. Yes, sometimes you have to take a pay mm. cut, but I could have, that was, I mean, that wasn't, I took a pay cut and a pay cut and a pay cut, you know? <laughs> Wait, do you know, um, that's another thing. I feel like, um... So it was also, women, I didn't do my research, I would say. Yeah. It wasn't even that I, I didn't go in with the manager. I could have done more research. Yeah. Um, I learned now, people are always hesitant about asking people in the industry, how much did you make from mm -hmm. this? But I have some people who I, you don't have to tell me the specific, but a yeah. general uh, you know, ballpark. Yeah. And yes, I didn't know that many people in the industry then, but I did have certain people I could have spoken to mm. and they would have said, you know, make sure that you don't <laughs> say anything less than 10 and move. Okay, you so know? do you so, know, yeah. it's, it's, um, it's interesting because I think that that thing stems from fear. It does. So a lot of women who are in a creative field yeah. are afraid to charge. Yeah. Because it's almost like if I don't, if I say I want this amount, I might lose this opportunity yeah. completely. Yeah. So they're scared to charge. Yeah. And we need to get over that fear. And Most we need definitely. to get over the fear of asking our contemporaries, like, what did you get paid for this? Yeah. And if, like you said, even if you don't tell me the exact that, amount, just to what's the, you know, ban? Because that's happened to me several times. But you know, I don't play with my money, girl. I know. I will call and ask, um, I got this opportunity. What do you think Big, I should charge? Hey, what's the fair like, thing? What's the fair yeah. And people will always be honest. Values. Well, this person yeah. is wicked. Do you understand? <laughs> They're like, ah, no, just tell them 100K. Like, <laughs> otherwise, I don't think I've ever done that to everyone. I've always been very honest and been like, you know, you can do somewhere between X and Z. Um, and I think that we should learn to do that. Whether or not you're in the industry, mm -hmm. even if you work nine to five, when you're about to get a promotion, ask someone else who works in another company at that same level, what do you think and is And then fair? just even know the value that you're bringing to exactly. the table. As long as you can articulate the value that you're bringing to the table and you can stand by it and the work sort of matches what you're asking for, then, you know, you'll be fine. Most definitely. Okay, what's the biggest or the best investment um, decision you've ever made? 
That's if, okay. So I did get a mutual. I did a mutual fund uh, maybe two or three years ago, and that was really good. It okay. yielded really, really well. Um, and then I bought some stocks, um, and that's been going well. Uh, getting your dividends is like <laughs> okay, like this is actually working. So that's really cool. So how did you how did you make that decision? So like, was I, it because someone came yeah. to market you from mm-hmm. an investment firm, or it was just something like oh? This mutual funds thing, like I want to. So, so someone I did have a friend who uh, was a financial manager, and he said to me, you know, Balanle, I think it's really important that you, you stop putting, you start some, putting money some money aside and buy stocks. Yeah. You know, get some mutual funds. Um, and I, I listened to him. I should have listened to him also <laughs> when he told me to change up my money to dollar when the naira was crashing, <laughs> but I didn't. <laughs> so that was kind of a huge mistake. But it's really nice just to have like a residual dividends coming Income. in, and I have to learn though how to not. To reinvest that, so mm. I don't think I've gotten that trick so, yet. So reinvesting like the profits, yeah. like the dividends that you. Yeah. So you're such a brave girl, Shell. Because when I talk to lots of young, you know, millennials, mm. what they usually say is, "I don't want to invest in the stock market because I don't want to lose all my money." Yeah. Right. Like, so you weren't scared. You had no, no. fear. So I, 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 do, I don't have fear when it comes to certain things. <laughs> I'm a risk taker when it comes to money. You know I that. Love it. I love it. <laughs> you, you know that. Are, but I'll save that story for another day. <laughs> So, um, yeah, I love it because um, people don't realize that, especially when you're young, the stock market gives you like a lot of opportunity. Yeah. But it's a long term. Ev- exactly. You can't put money in it that, you know, you want to use for your rent mm-hmm. or you mm-hmm. have a short term like requirement Definitely. for you have to think about it long term. And that over a period of time, the long period, um, it gives you the best return on your investment mm-hmm. Above all other like um, asset classes, yeah. but it also has a lot of risk. Definitely. So people want to. We we live in a generation where people want. They want fast the money. money they cash. want the fast money. Which we, like, we've done those ones. We've done the high risk investment. <laughs> investment, and then they, but they don't want to lose any yeah. of their money. But I think it's great that you diversify because yeah. a lot of entertainers, you know, they say, you know what, my I am my own investment, which is so, and which, they don't diversify, so they don't have a stock portfolio, they don't have you know, property, they don't have, Which you know, I think is, is um, also something bills. that I had to learn, and I'm glad that I did it much earlier in my career, you know, because um, the honest truth about it is you never know with mm-hmm. the work we do how money flows. The cash flow is up and down. Yeah. You have really high seasons. Sometimes you have lower seasons. Sometimes there's no season at all. You, so know? you have to consistently be yeah. building your net worth and protecting your financial exactly. future. So good job with that. Thanks, thanks. Um, let's talk about multiple st- streams of income. Yeah. Right now, you're in the process of um doing your first presenting master i know it's crazy um so that's another that's an interesting one because i realized that i was working with a lot of people who were very interested in becoming presenters mm. and it was becoming a bit tedious doing the um email version mm-hmm. so sometimes they would even send me videos of themselves presenting and i yeah. give them feedback and i said i was like you know what how can i make this more structured mm. and how can i actually teach them on a one-on-one basis so mm. pretty much it's a master class for people who are insp- uh, aspiring presenters <laughs> and i'm going to be coaching them you know giving them feedback we're going to be going through all the different types of presenting, presenting and even talking a little bit about brand building as well because i know that it's not just presenting they're interested <laughs> in they're interested in the whole package, package and experience but that's great because basically you've taken what you know you're teaching it and you've created another the stream of income, income for definitely. yourself that's amazing so when you get your money so yeah. we talked about how great it is to save and invest but we also know that we have to find a balance with you know what you spend it on as well you like to live a nice life so what's your Um, splurge my splurge my splurge is definitely saving up for travel so like (laughs) i have i have like i have like a dream vacation in my head um and it's really expensive (laughs) it's really expensive i want to go to barbara oh my god i know by yourself yeah by myself or with my sister (laughs) Or with the boo, whatever, you know. <laughs> um, but it's an expensive vacation. Okay. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to save this, save up to this. So fingers crossed, end of the year, I'll be at in Bora Bora. So I'm a splurger on, on vacations. I, I love it. You know, I'm not really a things... Uh, things person. You yeah, like more experiences. I like more experiences. Yeah, that's like me. Yeah. Um. So what's your money philosophy? Your smart money mantra. The one thing that you absolutely have to do with your money like every time you make it okay so whenever i make money um what i do is i usually have a list of things that i've been planning towards like Mm -hmm. projects that i want to do so if i want to maybe buy x z or if i want to invest in like right now i have i want this specific camera that i want to get um so what i do is 
I break the money into mm -hmm. four places or as many places. So I know this 100K is for this, that 50K is for that. And then I take out like my 15% for savings. That's um, so that's what I do. But I already know what, what is happening with that money before yeah. it comes into so you, my account. So you spend very intentionally yes. and you still find a balance by investing 15% of your income Come into because what I realize is when I don't plan pre-plan what's the money money will just go girl it will go and I can't I'm like wait where is that money I can't <laughs> see it you know and in Nigeria we all know that things come up you know generator breaks mm -hmm. plumbing lights <laughs> car there's always something it's so hard what I realize is that if I don't pre-plan I find that the money just disappears and you're just um, living from paycheck to exactly. paycheck with no assets to show yeah. for it yeah so final question if you had a hundred million oh my gosh <laughs> and you won the lottery or something yeah. like how would you spend it how would you invest it okay most definitely free money free like, money you didn't... the very first thing I would do is I would and this is probably a split I would buy a house in Cape Town that's for sure. I'm obsessed with that place. And I think it's the kind of investment that's good for my mental health. Yeah. <laughs> By the water, near the mountains. So it's an asset, but also like a, like a holiday spot yeah. as well. You know, that kind that has open air balcony and the fireplaces outside, that kind of place. I love it. Um, I would definitely do that. And then I would buy property in Lagos as well, um, mm. you know, and in the nicer areas of Lagos. And then I would also buy property in very in places that are really developing mm. because I think that's a very smart, long, long-term mm. plan. Um, and probably the property that I would buy in Lagos, I don't think I would live there. I think I'd rent it out. Smart girl. Yeah, I would rent it out. So I know I said final question before, okay. but just to round up, for girls out there who want to be a media personality and they want to be successful at mm. it, what three money lessons that you would, you know, share with them? So I would say, you know, as a young person, you have more disposable income. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I think you should really do is make sure that you invest, like when the money is flowing, invest it. As yeah. we get older, the responsibilities become mm -hmm. a lot more. You know, I'm older now and part of my desire is to want to be able to just send my parents money left, right, and center. Yeah. And I think it's something that's important to me. Mm. Um, and also, I've also added, you know, helping people who are less fortunate than me. That's something that's really important mm. to me because after a while, I was just like, wait, I'm making all this money and how is it affecting anyone I else's don't have life? that many responsibilities. Exactly. So I have yeah. disposable income to influence other mm. people's lives. Um, the second thing I would say is, you know, really, and I don't want to, it's hard for me to say this because sometimes I think people have different splurges, mm. but... I really think you have to be careful on how you splurge on things that are material. Mm. Um, just be really, really careful. You know, if you can't afford X, Y, and Z, yeah. don't put that pressure on yourself. Yeah, so. um, for example, I've never bought a phone before. <laughs> I've never paid for a phone with, by myself. And it's just not something that's important mm -hmm. to me because I realize that if they throw it since I water, it's that's done. 500K is gone. Yeah. Um, you know, so you really have to be smart about how you invest in material things. I do understand that making money sometimes comes with packaging mm -hmm. and presenting and putting your best foot forward. But you forward. have to find a balance. But there has to be a very strong balance. And don't, I know this, we all say this, but don't be influenced by what you see on social media. But it's true. Be influenced in a positive way, but yeah. don't be influence so that you just look like the Joneses. So you're putting yourself on you know, a long thing because you think someone's life looks yeah. a certain way and you want to emulate Like it. I'm not I'm not struggling mm. with Kim Kardashian. There are even people in Nigeria that I'm not struggling with them. Mm -hmm. They've been in the industry the game longer than me. They should floss. Yeah. Do you understand? Like let's not drag with each other. It's more of a be patient, everything in its time. time. You know, just work hard yeah. and you eventually get there. Exactly. Thank you so much. Thanks Brian. for having this, me. This is amazing. Thank you. I had a good time. VAT, value added tax, is a tax paid on all goods and services and remitted by the seller of the goods or provider of the service to government. 5% VAT is added to the total cost of goods and services in Nigeria and when remitted to government is used for funding development. The VAT you pay will be used by government to develop our transport infrastructure like roads and railway lines to continually improve our educational sector by building more schools and upgrading existing ones to provide adequate security and a better quality of life for us all. Pay your VAT. Make your contributions to the development of Nigeria. It pays to pay your tax.
and we're back. I had so much fun shooting that episode with Bolanli. She had so many practical lessons to share from her journey. The three highlights for me were one, create multiple streams of income. Don't be afraid of investment products like mutual funds and stocks because as a young person, you have a longer time to recover, even if the market goes up and down. Two, always negotiate your worth. Don't leave money on the table by not doing your research. Be able to articulate your value properly before you state your price for a good that you're providing or services that you're providing. Bolanle gave the example of one time leaving seven million naira on the table by not negotiating properly and by not doing the research that um, would tell her what her market value was. And three, social media it has created a new social currency. It's become a tool that we can leverage to create opportunities that create an income for us or help us to subsidize our lifestyle. Thank you for watching this episode. See you next time.